Hey guys, a few weeks ago Blackmagic Craft inspired me uh, to create my first D&D &D vehicle. Um, I think it's based loosely on the Dungeon Cleaner from Labyrinth, um, it had, certainly had tones of that. But what he built just looked such good fun and it really tapped into my love of my bits box and just grabbing bits and creating things. But I've never done it for D&D. &D only for model making, kit bashing. So I thank you Jeremy for I created this monstrosity because of your inspiration and uh, I'm so 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 proud of it. It's um, deadly and dangerous and very spiky and it is going to inflict absolute terror not just in the characters but in the players as well so uh, <laughs> let's build this I think the old adage that one man's rubbish is another man's treasure is definitely true for this kind of hobby or interest you can't afford to throw anything away here I have a small collection of bits out of my bits box which is practically an entire room of stuff um, but from out of it I knew I needed to create the main structure which were these two wheels which were actually created from an air freshener refill. This part of the build can be both the most fun and the most frustrating because you're trying to figure out how you're going to put all these bits together to make a collective whole. So you're sort of winging it because when you're working with foam, that's EVA or XPS, you can create the shape and object that you need. But when you're working with entirely bits, you are slave to the form that they already have. And yeah, you can cut them and chop them a little, but you're looking for their core essence. And I have to say, it's definitely worth spending as much time as you can at this point um, because your ideation will just be enriched the more you play with these individual shapes. So once my idea was kind of born inside my head as to what the major components were going to go together like, then I need to start fabricating the elements that will make the structure of this vehicle hold together. So right now what I'm using is a chipboard to create the chassis. And I have to say this is the first time I've ever used chipboard. And it's a, re it's a really nice material. I have to say, I can see why so many crafters go on about it. But it did have a propensity for the layers to separate on some of the smaller parts, which um, I ended up fixing with just using a, a super glue, but I wasn't anticipating that. The one thing you definitely do need for the chipboard is a sharp blade, and you have to use several passes to cut through it, uh, which can be a little time consuming, but no great issue. One of the things that you really have to consider when you are kit bashing this way is the number of dry runs you need to do. It's quite critical that you don't glue everything together until you absolutely have to. Keep it as the major components separated for as long as you can so that uh, you're not trying to rip things apart at a later point. So the chassis that I was building 
uh, out of the chipboard needed to be wider so I added these spacers and then glued two identical pieces together so that I've got that chassis uh, form that I'm after. I like this because it's very edgy and angular and it makes me think of evil and bad people and um, the spikes go very well with, with that sort of uh, shape language. So the process of design isn't only at the beginning, it kind of evolves as you form these major structures and you begin to think about the smaller shapes and the smaller details that will fit onto those structures. One of the major considerations as well for these kind of plastics that you get on these bottles is their surface doesn't take glue and paint very well. Um, so you need to sand pretty much everything. Just a sandpaper and a light rubbing will give you the desired tooth for future gluing and painting. Hot melt glue is going to be your friend for most of the work and so here I'm just gluing the what was originally the upper portion to the lower portion which gives me a nice firm bond and uh, creates those wheel like structures which are the key feature I guess of this build. There were a variety of ways I could have dealt with this chassis and uh, some of the finer details on it but I decided I would just use a piece of white craft card uh, wrap it around the edge to seal the gap or to close the gap and uh, that worked out quite well. I just adhered that with PVA. Uh, it was easy to do for this. As my idea evolved, I knew I wanted this sort of basket structure at the back of the vehicle, which is where all of the torn body parts would end up to be mulched. And that's why the bits box there sits at my side, so that you constantly got those little uh, potential uh, solutions right there in front of you. And so it's definitely worth keep digging into that box and trying little bits as the larger shapes evolve so that you start to get this clearer idea of what the finished piece is going to look like. The legs for this vehicle were, for me, a very critical part. I wanted them to be large and dominant and look very visceral. So with the major structure laid out there in front of me, I just started ideating with the pencil onto some white card so that I could just get a feel for what I might want these to look like. Now, in the final build, they do obviously change ever so slightly, but this just allowed me to dry run with uh, an easy material before committing to the actual creation of these legs. So um, I wanted them to be quite mechanical in form, so they're going to follow a similar build structure to the chassis, uh, with, uh, but with more embellishment. I wanted there to be a pivot point, so I cut the white piece of card into two and then I used the two halves as the template cut from chipboard. This material was really, really well suited to the creation of these, these mechanical parts and this really sold the idea of 
the future use of chipboard in my uh, builds. I wanted a spacer between the two component parts of the legs and so that's what I'm doing right here now. But this is where I suffered the most problem with the separation of the veneers of the chipboard itself. So uh, here you can see I'm trying to fix that by just putting uh, hot melt glue as a bead all the way around. But I had to go back in and super glue it a couple of times after that. At this point now, pretty much all of the major structures are done and we're down to the fine detailing. So I'm using white card, uh, cut into strips and these are gonna add small metallic paneling to the, to the wheels. And much of the uh, embellishments of this stage are attached using super glue, uh, which adheres very well to the card and the plastic. Now I already knew that this build was going to require a substantial number of spikes. So I line up a whole bunch of barbecue skewers, dra drag a line across with a sharpie pen and then begin the process of chopping them all down so that I have a nice number of spikes to play with. Once all the spikes were cut, I took a piece of sandpaper and sanded all of the nub ends so that they were nice and flat for attaching to the various parts of the vehicle. I have to say though, if I was to do uh, this again on anything, I would try to drill a sinkhole using a pin vise uh, due to the fact that the barbecue skewers just broke back off very easily from the various places. Here you can see that I've just made um, some teeth on the, the front of this uh, part of the vehicle, uh, just using white card and attaching it. And then white card is being used to create a rim edge all the way around the legs to give more interesting surface detail. And then the white card is attached to the chipboard using a very thin layer of PVA uh, which bonds it really nicely. I'd seen a few other people do this using a hole punch to create rivets. These are probably a little on the big side but they work adequately well to give extra surface detail to these critical parts of the overall build. And here they are, all finished up, mostly. They don't look as gruesome yet as they will, but uh, that's now down to the paint. So, I hit the all of the component pieces still separated with a grey primer and then a metallic silver finish so that I could then lay over the top of that a really dirty, filthy, kind of very dark brown wash and that's just made from red and black. I've said in my other videos that uh, as an illustrator I like to mix my paints so I use artist acrylics 
And that red and black will make a nice dirty brown, which I can just wash over the whole thing and really dirty it up. It's at that point, once that stage of the painting is done, that I then glue the component pieces together so that I've got one whole object for the rest of the painting. And for that, I finally invested in a set of the Vallejo model paints. So these were the only colours I had really to use uh, through my airbrush, which is being dragged out after many years of having not used it properly. And I made up my own painting medium based on what I've seen a few of the other crafters out there uh, put together. So I lightly airbrushed over some key areas with the dull brown and then I went with this red colour to add the blood stains to all of the metalwork and especially in those uh, uh, flesh pits at the back of the vehicle. It was once I got to this kind of gore stage that I felt I needed to add another element to this of real sort of horrific gore. And so I had this old miniature here. I've got a feeling that might be a Hero Quest miniature. However, I uh, felt that if I'd got a figure that was impaled on one of the spikes, it would really add some terror to the uh, to this piece. I went ahead and started hacking up this figure, um, taking off a few limbs, and uh, and really making sure that he was going to be. Uh, busted up pretty badly. To have him firmly impaled on the spike I decided to just drill straight through his chest with the Dremel here and that did the job pretty perfectly. It also left behind this sort of a bit of a residual uh, plastic shavings and uh, because they were just automatically already red I felt that I could use those for an added bit of uh, horror. And so with a little bit of uh, super glue and a barbecue skewer, I was able to mould these sort of tendons that stretched out to his torn off hand. It was pretty grim and it made me smile a lot. I was well pleased. In my bits box, I'd got some of these old cogs, so I just very loosely glued them into place in those uh, flesh pits and then I added just a pound store two-part epoxy to create a sort of glossy liquid that would uh, be the pools of blood in the bottom of these flesh pits. I also wanted to add some torn skin and so this uh, kitchen roll just pushed in there and mulled around um, really went a ragged coarse looking texture uh, which I felt worked out really great for that um, skin that uh, was flayed from the bodies of this vehicle's victims. And finally, after creating all of that carnage in the smaller details, it's finally time to start painting all of these gory bits. And for that, I'm just using a fully rich red uh, scarlet colour uh, to go over and paint all of that. And you may see that I've added a few of the spatters and, and uh, bits of gore here and there, just using hot melt glue or tissue to create the, uh, the stringy elements. And then finally, once the red gore has been painted, I go over with a final dark black brown wash uh, just to tone some of that rich red down and uh, add some darks back into the areas that I want to pull out there. I did go back in and use some dry brushing with a metallic silver just to give some real definition to the edges. Well guys, there you go, that's the end of the video and uh, these are the beauty shots and I really hope that you're enjoying these tutorials that I'm bringing you. I'm having an absolute blast making them and they're going to carry on no matter what. But if you did want to help me out, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notifications bell and if you really want to go the extra mile, come over to my Patreon page 
and, uh, and just sign up any tier that would be amazing and uh, you'll get to be able to download the uh, these videos and keep them for uh, for yourself as well as all the other stuff that I do as an actual fantasy artist so uh, I will look forward to seeing you on wherever and uh, catch you later guys next week bye